December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. I was uh, at Joe Sanfilippo's house on Foot Avenue there, and uh, I remember that day, but Pearl Harbor, we didn't know where Pearl Harbor was at that time, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, I remember that day. It was that Sunday. It was a, wasn't a bad day. I mean, as far as, you know, there wasn't no snow or anything that I can remember. I graduated in 43. Did you, get a, did you enlist or did, were you drafted? I was drafted. <laughs> I was drafted. I got my notice, I think. I graduated in June. I think I got my uh, report notice in July. I had to go to Buffalo in August for a physical. And then after that, when I passed the physical, I, I had to go to report for duty on the 17th of September, 43. It was an infantry training camp. 17 weeks, then you go. You're overseas. Did you know where you were going when you left the States? Did you have any no, idea? No, we didn't know that either. No. We, uh, they put us on a ship. We ended up in uh, Casablanca, North Africa. From there, they put us on a, a train. They put, us, they put you in a boxcar, held, uh, held uh, 40 men or eight horses. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's, uh, this is called a 40 and eight. And we rode about two, three days to get to Oran, North Africa. And, uh, I remember we got there at nighttime and the train derailed. <laughs> and we heard a lot of commotion. But they come out and said, everybody stay in your stay in your box, stay in the in the in the boxcar, because a lot of guys are getting electrocuted. They must have electrified when they got near Oran, because before that was uh, just a regular steam engine that took us up there. So we had to stay in the box. We had to stay in the box. A lot of guys were getting electrocuted getting out. <clears throat> we st first we stopped at Sicily, in uh, Syr Syracuse, Sicily. From there we went to uh, Naples. Outside of Naples was a big dairy farm that Mussolini's son-in-law had a dairy farm there. Conciano. Yeah. You ever hear that name? Conciano. Yes. Well, Mussolini had him shot, had him killed, <laughs> because he was trying to negotiate with, a, with to get a peace. That Mussolini did away with him. His son-in-law, yeah, Conciano. So it was a big dairy farm there, and they put up like a tent city for a replacement depot. And then from there, I got. Uh, then they took us to. From there, we went to. Uh, Bagnolia was like a shipping out point. They pulled us on LCIs, and we went to Anzio, up the coast. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then we got off at Anzio. Well, that was a... <sighs> See, truck over the gas. Part like cordwood on the back end of a truck, getting back from the front. That was an eye opener. What you're in for? But that's where I got assigned to a regular office. <clears throat> it was a uh, 91st Division, and. Uh, We were attached to the 36th Division. Well, the 91st Division had, uh, they had still three, uh, two regiments down in North Africa. And this 361 was the first one to come up. And they attached us to the 36th Division. Mm -hmm. First moved onto the Anzio beachhead on June 1st, 1944, and was personally addressed by Mark Clark, and then immediately moved out onto the line. You're coming out there, I mean, General Clark, he, he welcomed you. <laughs> well, yeah, he reviewed you, yeah? That's, yeah. That's... Now, we know General Clark now, four-star general. Was he a big deal then? 
He was then, but after the war they started making comments about him. Screwed up. The 361st Regimental Combat Team returned to the control of the 91st Infantry Division on July 4th. We got hooked up to him at night time. It was a, a town of Valetri. God, that's a... That was another eye-opener. First, first day of combat, you know. But you go on. Were you surprised on that combat, or did you know where the enemy was? No, didn't know. No, we we didn't know anything. We were green. Right. But uh, after a day or so, you're, you're a veteran. <laughs> That first day, though, of combat, that's when you, you really can't prepare for that. No, no, no. They shelled the hell out of us, I remember that. Jesus. I was a company messenger. Okay. From the, from the CO to my platoon. I had the fourth platoon, right. about 20, 25 guys. And I was a messenger between the company commander in the platoon. So you're physically moving. I mean, you're, you're on the run. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, with this Jeep, were you in a Jeep? No, hell no, Jeep. <laughs> Walked. Walk? That would have been a very dangerous position, right, with the Germans? One goddamn time. He sent, us, he sent me and another messenger to contact the, <coughs> our office. They had gone out, and we couldn't get contact with them. So he sent us out there to contact them. So he sent me and this guy by the name of Swillam. He's from St. Louis. And uh, he says, follow the creek bed, and you'll run into them. Well, we follow the creek bed. Over to our right, we can see tank, our tanks are burning up. We heard voices. We thought they were our guys. God, how in the hell we ever got up there? We walked up. There was a big hedge along the side of the road. And uh, we walked up there. We looked. Me, there are goddamn Germans there, all Germans, just relaxing, talking, you know. But they didn't see us. We walked right up the field, right up to the hedge. Got up there. I told the guy, I says, let's stay here till nighttime, then we'll take off. I said that, boom, he takes off. <laughs> Gosh. I re-ran, you know, I zigzagged, you know, and they were shooting at us, but then they didn't hit us. Yeah. He, he could, we had radar walkie-talkies, but they weren't very, the country wasn't made for that kind of stuff, and those radars weren't that good anyway. So we had, most of the time, had to go out and, you know, find these guys and talk to us, see what the, what the cap, captain wanted to do. <laughs> Were these verbal messages? Yeah, verbal. You didn't have pieces of paper? No, or? no, verbal. The 36th Division, after we got to Rome, they let the 36th Division go in there to occupy Rome because there was no fighting in Rome. It was an open city. The Germans didn't defend it at all. You know what bugged me most? When we were going to Rome, we, uh, people all lined up, you know, welcoming you and all that. They see these guys my age or pretty strapping guys, they're welcoming you. We're in their country and they're enjoying themselves and here we're risking our lives over there for those guys. That bugged the hell out of me. And then we went to uh, Florence. Florence was another open city. There was no fighting in there either. Well, we walked most of the time. One time we rode a tank. Tanks, we didn't like the tanks because they create a lot of dust and they can spot you or they can hear you. The tanks make a lot of noise. Remember that one town, San Mangino? That town there, we rode in on tanks. No sooner we got in the town square, they're shelling the hell out of us. You know, all the time you see a dead German there, you can get his Luger or get his pistol or something. Don't do it. Because if you get captured and they catch you, 
you're dead. Uh, you don't want to. Uh, I think it was the same way, vice versa, you know. By October 9th, 1944, lead elements of the 361st approached the Liverano escarpment, nicknamed Liver and Onions by the soldiers. Guarding the approaches to the town and further progress up north of Highway 65, the escarpment was three miles long. At some point, you, you actually get hit, don't you? I got shot. Yeah. Huh? Tell me, how, where, where was that and how that happened? I was trying to make radio contact, so I, we're, I went outside this house here and I... Whereabouts are you now? Up in Livignano, up north, yeah. north of, almost to Bologna. <clears throat> and uh, I tried to make contact with our unit, so I thought I'd go outside and get better reception with the walkie-talkie. All of a sudden, <laughs> I thought I got hit with a rock or something. It was, you know, hit my leg, broke the bone. That's what it was. And uh, but what happened that day, a couple of days before that, at this at this place here, we some Italian native. <clears throat> he showed us a way to get up the path to the to the. I was going to say, what, the through the valley of the mountains, you know. We were in this house up there when we got behind the line there. And uh, I was in the basement. The other guys were in the different floors, a couple of floors up. A tank come down the road that night, and he knew we must have been in there, and he just shelled the hell out of that place. Guys screaming, crying, and killed a hell of a lot of guys on, on the upper floors. We were down the basement, so he had second or third floor. That's a lot of guys. Get replacements. Don't know the last a day or so. You don't even know their names. They're, they're gone already. Mm -hmm. We we had one outfit that after we got him behind up there, we had a, a K company come behind us. They're, they're in reserve. They're supposed to relieve us and go ahead of us. And they went in this town of Liberignano. There's only one way in and one way out. Highway 65 went through there. This this company relieved us and they went in. The Germans let them in. Then once they got in the town, they got behind them and started shoot, killing them. They kept the whole goddamn company. Just a couple of guys got out of there. Radio operator and another get a couple of guys. They hid in the pigsty or something. He told me, but they captured the whole company, K Company. But next day, hell, they get another company up there in no time. But I was trying to make contact with our unit, so I went outside and tried to get better reception, but then, and I got and I got shot. I must have moved on him, otherwise a sniper they usually don't miss that that bad. He hit me in the leg. And uh but then I couldn't get out of there because we had German behind us and Germans ahead of us. So I stayed there all night long. <clears throat> then at nighttime the Germans start pulling back. So they come up with a Jeep and uh, pick me up. Captain says, you got a million dollar wound there. It was a million dollar wound, I got out of there. Because you know sooner or later you're gonna get killed or you're gonna get wounded one way or another. Your odds are against you. 
And when they picked me up, they, uh, they were firing at us because they heard the noise. They must have heard the noise that somebody was moving around. I told the guys, I said, don't stop, keep moving. <clears throat> so, so you're hit, they come up, they put you on a Jeep, there's fire while you're trying to get out of there. And it took me back to a battalion medical thing. It was a few, a few miles behind the line. And from there, they put me in the ambulance, took me to Florence, to the hospital down there. It was a college that the Army had taken over, made a hospital out of it. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was kind of a misty day. It was, they had a lot of casualties. And I remember laying outside there in the misty rain, you know, get the worst ones first anyway. Take care of them guys first. So, then the operator had a full leg cast. I laid in the bed there for about six or seven weeks. We're talking about this right, Livignano. I got hit the 13th, and they captured the town the next day, the 14th. Mm. They got in there. They stayed in that area for six months. By the end of October 15th, Liver and Onions had been liberated. Ten miles short of the Po Valley, the division was exhausted. For the next five months, the division sat stationary in line. The next offensive was intended to break out into the Po Valley. From there I went to, uh, they put us on a train and we went down to uh, Naples. Huh. And uh, then they ZI'd me, they wouldn't mean the Zone of Interior. Go back to the States. And uh, went to a nice hospital on Staten Island, Halloran Hospital. Great place. They treated you real great. I must have left for the States in, probably in February or something, of 45. I got here on Friday the 13th. That's a lucky day mm. for me. <laughs> you ever think about the legacy of this? I mean, you, you, you were the greatest generation. You know, World War II, Tom Brokaw has written about it, many. Do you feel like you were part of the greatest generation? Do you think about that? No, I don't. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm glad I survived, you know. I'm proud of what I, you know, what I did do. But I don't know if I want to go through it again. <laughs> Lost a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. This one cemetery, remember outside of Florence? Mm -hmm. Most of my outfit was in that, in that cemetery. Around Florence. Like I say, a lot of these guys used to get replacements. Hell, a day or so, they're gone. You didn't even know them. You don't know what the hell they were. I was lucky. You have to be lucky to come back. Mm -hmm. Total casualties for the division were 1,400 killed and 7,344 wounded.